Hey everybody, welcome back. So one of the first comments I get whenever I make a video that has a 3D printed part in it is the question, do you dry your filament? And whenever I respond with something like, you know, I live in an air-conditioned house in the middle of the desert, I really don't think I need to, then I get a whole lot of, well, you know, even 1% humidity is too much and it'll ruin your prints and you'll get stringing and, you know, on and on and on. So I decided I want to answer this question once and for all. So I'm going to build something to dry filament. And while I think the wood-fired kiln you're looking at could probably do it, it's not where we're going. Most people seem to want to use food dehydrators. So I popped over to Amazon and my first thought was, what do I want in a food dehydrator that I'm going to turn into a filament dryer. Well, I want it big enough for filament, obviously, but I also want an on-off switch and a, and a thermostat. And this one really fills the bill. It's only 35 bucks. It's made by Rosewell. It gets good reviews. And um, it's got an on-off switch, and it's got a thermostat that goes from 35 to 70 C. Perfect. So um, I noticed that some people do go ahead and cut the center of these trays out and just use it like it is. But I'm thinking, you know, it's a food dehydrator. Why remove that functionality from it? So my next thought was to pop over to Thingiverse and see what other people have done. Because, you know, why reinvent the wheel? So I did that, and look at all the stuff I came up with. There are some amazing things people have figured out on Thingiverse. And there's actually more than that, but, you know, for some reason, Thingiverse doesn't seem to want to scroll down for me today. Anyway, I decided on this one. This is, well, this will print on an Ender 3, because this is a 13-inch food dehydrator. You obviously can't print a 13-inch ring on an Ender 3. You can't print it on a CR-10. So um, this part is, de is designed in four different sections, and pins like this to hold it together, and um, four sections with tabs and holes. Now, I printed mine out of ABS. People in the comments have said if you're going to go above 50C, do not print it out of PLA because PLA will warp. And um, you could probably print it out of PEDG or a high temp PLA or just dry everything at 50C. You'll just have to up the drying times. So anyway, I decided to use this and it prints. He gave a, let's take a look at it here. He gave one of his STLs has two parts and this prints corner to corner on an Ender 3. This two-piece STL prints in about 20 hours on my Ender 3 and um, so about 41 hours total at 60 millimeters per second and um, it requires support for these um, for these tabs and down here on these ledges print it in this orientation. Mine came out really nice and um, I printed the pins out of a high temp white PLA just because I already had it in my 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 Ender 3 that's not in the enclosure. The, AB one, the one I did on the ABS was the Ender 3 in the enclosure. So it's all done. I've got it put together. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so here is my newly purchased Rosewheel food dehydrator. And as you'll see, it comes with a lid. And the lid does have, um, lid does have slots in it. So when you run it, the hot, moist air has a chance to get out. Then it comes with five of these trays. These trays are designed to put food on to dehydrate. And um, I say people do. I have seen people that have cut these out with their snips. If you don't want to use it as a food dehydrator, then these trays are of no value to you. So you probably don't care if you do cut them out. And you can do that. But if you want to use the thing on Thingiverse like I'm going to use, you don't want to do that, or if you want to keep it as a food dehydrator too, you don't want to be cutting it apart. So here is my final printed part that I made. Made it out of black ABS, and honestly, I think you could print this thing out of PLA as long as you never went above 50, 55C, and you can dry just about any filament in 55C as long as you're willing to leave it in longer. You'll just have to up the drying times. But you can see I um, put the four pieces together with the pins, and the designer said that you probably will need to file the holes out to get the fins to, pins to fit without using unreasonable force to do so. I decided to go ahead and use unreasonable force, as I so often do. And that's why you'll see that I have, I, I, I hot glued up all of the segment sections because I'm never going to take it back apart and I want it to be solid. And I, um, then I, my cracks where I used unreasonable force, I went ahead and I glued those up too. And um, seems to be pretty solid, not going anywhere. Like I say, any I think any PLA, and I think 
the high temp PLA or PETG would be as good as the um, as the ABS. Like I say, I just happen to have the ABS already loaded into the machine, and I know it'll take the temperature. So how does it work? Well, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to leave one of these dehydrating trays on the bottom. Then we're going to slip this on here, and that fits really well. That ledge on the bottom, it sits right inside this tray, and it lines right up perfectly. And then you take the, the lid that comes with it, and the lid that comes with it fits right on the top beautifully. And I got a couple of rolls of filament here. Let's see how they work in it. These are two different rolls. This is the standard junk, and it's not junk, it's good filament. The cheapo PLA I buy from from eBay, I have probably printed 20-25 rolls of this stuff. It's like 12-13 bucks a roll and it seems to work really well for me for most stuff. And then I have a roll of Melco 3D printed filament. I wanted an oddball color, a really vivid, you know, banana yellow, canary yellow, and this stuff was perfect. And these filaments, I mean, uh, they're about the same. The Melco's a little wider, I think. But, um, Melka, not Melco. Sorry, Melka. And, um, two of them fit in just fine. Oops. There we go. Two of them fit in just fine. So, that's my drying rig. And I, I had attempted to put a, a, a humidity gauge in it to see how low it would go. And, um... I was using this one and I found it doesn't go below 16% and even the ones that claim to go to zero if you read the reviews on it people say they don't really go below 10 or 15 so I also have um, an old style analog one and it does go to zero and I did stick it in there and it does go all the way down to zero in fact it went below zero when I put it in there for very long and I also got a wet sponge put it in the sink under running water and um, squeezed it out just to the point it wasn't dripping put it in there and in a couple hours it turned it into a crispy a crispy critter so it does apparently get down to zero percent humidity and seems to dry stuff out really well I haven't used it for food yet but there's something you can do with a system like this that you can't do with anything else and that is very simply you can dry your filament and um make beef jerky at the same time. But this is the system I'm going to use to dry my filament and I'm going to get going with some tests. I'm going to start my first tests are going to be on PLA and I have a roll of Hatchbox white PLA, very nice Hatchbox filament. I have had that roll of filament for a little over a year I bought it to do a specific job, and I did that job, and it's been sitting on my shelf ever since, since it's just bone white, and I don't really have much call for just plain bone white filament. But I'm going to do some of those tests, and I'm going to get back to you guys with the results, and we're going to answer the question, do you need to dry your filament?